A guitar amplifier to an XLR audio output is discussed in this circuit analysis video, which is the 208th video in the circuit playlist. At the input, we have an electric guitar that, uh, for that, pickup converts the vibration into an electric signal that appears at the input of the positive or non-inverting terminal of an op-amp that combine with a number of passive components including resistors, capacitor, and potentiometer then converts that input signal Vn to an output signal V out one that is serving as, for, the, for example, hot input to one of the three pins of the XLR connector. Then a second op-amp or operational amplifier com combined with number of passive components, capacitor and resistor, then uh, generates the second output voltage Vout2 that is potentially, for example, cold input to the connector. And finally, we have the ground connection. So that's the big picture view of how the circuit is working. But let's then now compute the output voltage, basically find out what are Vout1 and Vout2 as a function of Vin at the input of the circuit. And Vin is generated because of the vibration sensed by pickup on electric guitar. Okay, so uh, let's also focus on the first amplifier here. We have a very large capacitor, for example, on the order of 10, 20 microfarad. The reason for that is the impedance of this amplifier is simply uh, Z, let's say the impedance of this capacitor ZC in soil steady state analysis is 1 over JC omega, which effectively you can write it as 1 over J, C, and 2 pi F, in which F is the frequency of the vibration or signal that is generated by the guitar. That F, let's say, is anything that is above, let, that, that is, let's say, uh, less than or greater or equal 100 hertz, the, let's say the minimum frequency of interest, up to, say, to any kilohertz, that is what we can hear at most. All right, so these are the range of frequency of interest in the signal Vn. And the reason we say this is, for example, 10 microfarad or 20 microfarad for this cap is good enough because then uh, the absolute value of uh, the impedance of capacitor at frequency of, say, 100 hertz is going to be equal to uh, 1 over in a sinusoidal steady state analysis for the input signal, uh, which basically means in finding the amplifier gain. So let's say C is uh, 10 microfarad, which means 10 to the power of minus 5 farad. And then we have 2 pi f, 2 pi effectively 6.28. And then f is 100 hertz, so 10 to the power 2 hertz. So when you compute this, it just turned out to be um, equal to roughly on the order of, say, 150 ohm, which is then negligible compared to 1 kilo ohm that we have in series. So therefore, uh, for frequencies above 100 hertz in this example, we can neglect and assume that uh, cap 10 microfarad is effectively negligible impedance and it's short. So with that, for that range, I'm going to make the assumption that the first amplifier, basically this non-inverting amplifier, looks like this. We have the first op-amp, op-amp 1. And at positive input terminal, we have the voltage V in, the input V in, that is a signal with the frequency in this range. And then for the negative terminal, we have the connection via the potentiometer, so that's RP. And we have a, uh, just a fixed resistor of 1 kilo ohm to guarantee that there is at least 1 kilo ohm resistor in the feedback loop of the op amp when RP is 0, because RP is a variable resistor that can change from minimum 0, depending on the placement of the pointer to let's say up to 100 kilo ohm max <laughs> all right and then we have uh, the one kilo ohm to ground connection so i'm going to put it there as well so here is one kilo ohm to let's say the ground connection and for that uh, we are just basically saying we are going to neglect the 10 microfarad as effectively short to ground this is obviously, uh, the, the result of this is connected via 47 ohm to V out 1 as uh, was presented before. So the 47 ohm is for just impedance, uh, a proper connection to the, to the cable. So I'm going to neglect that. It's not important. It's 47 ohm. And then we have V out 1. So in this case, obviously the gain of, so we are dealing with a non-inverting amplifier. And for this non-inverting amplifier, uh, it's easy to just show that based on a simple KCL written at uh, this node, which is basically the negative terminal of uh, the op-amp, so a simple Kirchhoff current law, 
indicates that uh, basically the current going through the series of uh, these resistors would be equal to each other and effectively it's just the voltage scale up from this node to the output so therefore i can write the gain of the first amplifier v out one over vn is equal to one plus these two resistors in series so it would be r1 the one kilo ohm plus the rp the potential meter divide by the one kilo ohm that we have here so it divide by one kilo ohm okay so uh, therefore as a result since this is the gain of let's say this is the amplifier gain for the first amplifier as shown and it's a positive gain because it is a non-inverting amplifier what i can say is this amplifier has a gain in the range of so let's say minimum of gain will be when when the potential meter is set to zero so it would be equal to one plus r1 plus zero so rp is at minimum zero and uh, divide by one kilo ohm and of course r1 is also one kilo ohm hence the minimum gain is just two which means uh, if you compute then the 20 log 2 we are going to get 60 dB minimum gain so we have a gain of minimum 60 dB for the first amplifier and then if we compute the maximum gain which is uh, obtained when we set the potential meter to 100 kilo ohm so rp in this case is 100k in this upper case rp is zero so we're going to get one plus r1 plus we're going to get r1 plus just uh, equal to 100 kilo ohm so r1 plus 100 kilo ohm uh, let me just uh, find the right uh, color here so we will have r1 plus 100 kilo ohm and then divide by one kilo ohm which means effectively because r1 is 1k so we end up with getting 102 as the gain for max and if we take 20 log out of that one effectively translate to max uh, gain of amplifier roughly on the order of 40 db uh, gain for the amplifier so that's the range of gain basically roughly 2x to 100 or 102x that's the gain of amplifier and then for the second one what we have is from the output of op amp one which is here so let's say v out one roughly same as here then we're going to get uh, the second inverting amplifier as shown and by the way the two 10 picofarad capacitors that you can see connecting the output to the input of op amp are serving as a stabilizer cap just for the sake of avoiding uh, oscillation and provides better stability for the op amps uh, so for op amp 2 we have effectively an inverting amplifier which i'm going to show it like this so plus terminal is connected to ground as seen and then the negative terminal is connected via one kilo ohm here effectively to roughly v out one as i said we can neglect 47 ohm here and then we have the one kilo ohm here at the output of uh, between the output of op amp 2 and the input so this is obviously an inverting amplifier and again similar to just a general approach to inverting amplifier if we write the kcl at the negative terminal we can always say that the current going through the one kilo ohm should be equal to each other because no current can go through input terminal of op amp and then v out two naturally as a result as a function of v out one is just equal to gain of the second amplifier here which is negative one kilo ohm divide by one kilo ohm so it will be just negative one that's the gain of second amplifier and therefore effectively we are generating a positive and negative amplified voltage uh, at the uh, the hot and cold pins of the xlr uh, let's say connector this way so then this would be the differential sort of output and you can say that the gain is twice uh, what we have effectively so it's effectively a single ended input and then differential output effectively going through the connector one last point 
These two op amps could be any practical audio amplifier op amp from Texas Instruments or analog devices or other providers. Just make sure that the proper supply voltages for dual supply operation are there. So positive, negative, for example, 5 or 10 volt, depending on what your application need to be applied. Aside from that, obviously with proper BIOS, we have the output of op amps uh, clearly connected to negative input terminal, indicating that we have negative feedback. Therefore, Virtual short is in place for both amplifiers. So if you have positive terminal grounded, negative terminal effectively is forced via negative feedback to be also effectively zero volt equal to the same voltage at positive, indicating virtual short uh, for the both up amp to be valid as long as up amps are operating in linear region. And then effectively the voltage here is zero volt indicating that we have virtual ground at the negative terminal of up amp. At this point, for the positive, uh, let's say for the first amplifier that is working as a non-inverting amplifier, again, the virtual short guarantees that whatever appear at the positive, which is the V in, should be also at the negative terminal of the op amp. All right, so I hope that with this, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting circuit in terms of showing how we can have a simple uh, single-ended to differential let's say, uh, amplifier for the audio application like guitar signal application. I hope this